Hey guys, my name is Mike, also known as FlyFisher530. Today we're going to talk about something a little different, um, more fly fishing oriented. And um, if you have a new fly reel and you have no uh, line on it yet, just talking about you know how to get that accomplished. It's not that difficult. Um, you can also have fly shops do this for you um, if, if it feels a little bit too intimidating. But it's a good thing to learn how to do and um, it's, not, it's not that difficult. And hopefully this video gives you a little bit of insight into what to do. There are mainly, most of the time, most fly fishing, at least for trout, is going to be um, these four main components. And it starts with what's called backing material. This is just a braided line. We'll go into what each of these is kind of for. but. First you start with backing, goes on the reel first. Next thing would be your floating fly line. And um, most people have what's called five weight line. That's what most trout fishing is probably done with. Um, and you want that to be a, go with a five weight rod and a reel made for five weight line. Um, so that would be your next uh, item after the backing. And then after attached to the floating line would be what's called a leader. And this is just clear monofilament line. It starts out uh, fairly thick at the end attached to the uh, floating fly line, but then tapers down to a certain diameter uh, and strength associated at the end of that line. And this is uh, a 4X uh, leader, pretty typical for trout fishing. Uh, and the 4X is, is just denotes a certain diameter and uh, test test pound strength for the line. Um, and then after the, the tapered leader, um, you would put on what's called tippet. And this is 5X. And the reason you go typically, not always, but typically a, uh, a size smaller, even though it's a, a, it's a numeral higher, uh, 5X is a smaller diameter than 4X, and it's also less strength. Um, this is 4.4 pounds. So uh, the reason you would do this, put, put tip it on the very end, is if your line was to get caught on some brush or a rock uh, and you have to pull on it till it breaks, this will break first, not your leader. So the leader, sh it shouldn't at least, because this should be stronger with a 4X line at the end than the 5X line. And you can always tie on more tip it, but if you lose the leader, or at least a piece of the leader, um, it's, it's you're just spending more money on something you probably don't really need to be spending money on. So, and then attaching a whole new possible leader on the end of these. And these are typically seven and a half to nine and a half feet in length. I, I currently like the seven and a half foot lengths of these leaders. Um, and attached to these, you might put on 18 inches, two feet of, of tippet. So, just to review again, we start with the backing. That'll go on the reel first. It's a poly braided line. Then you're gonna have your floating fly line. Um, this is a weight forward, which is typical for most fly fishing. Um, and then uh, your leader, which is in this case, we're gonna use a seven and a half foot version. And at the very end of that, you're gonna have your tippet. So, all right, so let's get started. I'm gonna show you first how to tie this uh, braided line onto the reel. We'll start with that. And then from there, we'll go to tying it onto the floating fly line tying the floating fly line onto the leader and then the leader to the tippet. It's not that difficult, only a few knots you really need to know and um, hopefully you enjoy the video. All right, so this will be the uh, backing line that I'm gonna be putting on. Um, it's 20 pound test, it's 100 yards. Uh, probably only put on half of that. Um, and what you're gonna do is take the, uh, the line and we're going to uh, get it around the reel uh, we're going to go around twice, so I'm going to go over the top here, down under the bottom, I'm going to do this one more time, over the top again, and then down under the bottom. All right, so I'm gonna to need to do a big loop here. Hopefully this gets on the camera okay. All right, so, myself some extra line. 
I don't want to make big loops. Okay, so you're going to take the, the loose end is on the bottom. Um, and what we want to do is uh, make a loop. And we're going to make a large one here so you can see it hopefully. So you're going to go over the top of both lines, come back through the loop you made. And it's very simple. We're just going to do that five times. So that's once, twice, three, four, one more, five. That's it. I'm going to tighten these up into a knot, but we don't want it super tight yet because we want to work this knot down to the reel. So I'm just going to pull on this until we get down to the reel. I'm going to turn this so you can see it better now. So here's the knot. And we're just going to push that down to the reel. Use my fingernail to get it as close as possible. Start pulling on tighter. Pull both ends. And now we have a nice tight knot on that reel. It's not going anywhere. That's super, super good knot to start with and very simple. And that's really all you do. So um, that'll be the first knot. And uh, now the next uh, step will get be to uh, reel the backing line onto the reel. Okay, so the next step will be to get the backing line onto the reel. And just to give you guys a little story here, um, two fly rods that I had on one of my last trips um, in the series, uh, the series on 395, where I'm looking for the ultimate campsite, parts one and two. Um, I was going through some brushy areas and um, my fly rods were up on top of my uh, rooftop tent, which has a rack. And then um, I made a sort of a DIY rack for my rods. <clears throat> and one of the mistakes I made, and I, I don't know why I did this, but I faced the rods with the tips facing towards the front of the vehicle versus the tips facing towards the back of the vehicle. And I hit some brushy areas, a low hanging branch or something, and it snapped two of my fly rods. And uh, they happen to be my two best rods, my two Orvis rods. And um, uh, I, you know, just thought, oh my gosh, I'm just going to have to end up buying some new fly rods. And um, well, the Orvis. I looked into it, they have a 25 year guarantee on their fly rods and I was right at the end of that 25 years. So amazingly enough, I was able to just bring those broken rods into a local Orvis uh, dealer not too far from me, a retail shop. They shipped them back to Orvis and within a few weeks I had some brand new fly rods. Uh, one was a very high end rod and uh, another one was kind of a middle of the road for Orvis, which none of Orvis rods are cheap. but. Um, really really cool that i was able to get some brand new fly rods from that kind of mistake um, so um but my i think what i would say is if you're just starting out in fly fishing i wouldn't spend a bunch of money on on a fly rod at the beginning uh, my first rod was actually a cabela's rod and fly rod and reel combo thing and um that's what i would suggest for you guys you know is, is some sort of fly rod and reel combo that's not too expensive um, look on amazon for some good reviews or um, you know, go to one of those local um, large uh, sportsman shops and, uh, and uh, talk to some people there. Um, but I wouldn't really, if you're a beginner, I wouldn't spend a lot of money on it, is, is my recommendation. So anyway, what we want to do is get the, uh, the backing onto the reel. And so what I've done here is kind of a DIY thing again. Um, I've got the backing here on. Uh, in, in the vise, I have some vise grips. Vise grips are holding a screwdriver and that does a good job of holding the backing on. And I kind of tilted it a little bit so it can't run off the other edge. Um, so the backing's on, the reel there, and then I've got the, the reel mounted to the, the pole. Just make sure this is tight. So I'm a right-handed retrieve type guy, so the reel handle's on this side. So I, what I'm gonna do is just put some tension on this thing and uh, just start to retrieve. 
And as I do that, I'm trying to also watch where it's landing on the reel and try to, with my fingers, help get it from one side of the reel to the other. And we're just unwinding from the backing spool. And then I'm using my fingers to kind of get it onto both sides of the reel. And all the while keeping some tension on it because uh, otherwise you'll, you'll end up with a rat's nest of, of line on there if you don't have some decent tension on there. And uh, like I said before, I'm not going to try to um, use all of this. Probably only end up using half of it. So I'm using just using my fingers now, like I said, to kind of go from side to side here. Tighten this up a little more. I feel like it's kind of loose. Okay. Kind of amazing how little you put on at first because it, the reel, you know, has a small spool there, and it's going on good. Okay, I definitely have more than uh, half of the uh, backing on and I'm probably approaching more like two thirds. So that's gonna be it for uh, getting the backing on to the uh, reel. And uh, the next step will be to, we'll cut this and then we'll attach the fly line to uh, the backing. And that's gonna take a special uh, knot, which is kind of a cool knot, it uses a special tool and uh, I'll show you that guys that next. All right, so I've got a, probably about two thirds of the backing line on that was on the original spool, um, which is more than enough, probably 75 yards out of the 100 yard spool. So now that the backing line is on the reel, I'm gonna cut the line here and then we'll attach the fly line. Um, attaching the fly line to the backing line is gonna require what's called a nail knot. And there's a special tool I'll have a link in the description below to create that nail knot. It makes it really easy. You can do it without this tool, but it's, it's a lot easier with this. So uh, I'll show you that in more detail in the next segment. Okay, so we've got the tool set up. Lines running through the tool here, basically just being held between the two channels here. I'm gonna put my thumb on top of the line right here to kind of hold it. It's now in this little groove and just gonna wrap it once, twice, three, four, five, six. Now take the loose end, run it back through like that. Okay, so it's set up now, ready to attach the other line. Hopefully you can see that. We're going to take the fly line and that just simply goes in from this end. You don't have to take it that far, but now the trick is pulling this off and getting it onto the line. And I'm just going to pull it off my fingers here and pull the line taut. Not too bad. That's, that's totally fine. It's a little bit, there we go. Just kind of massage it. Hopefully you can see that it's actually fairly good. I haven't done one of these in a while, but that's damn good. So it's not going anywhere. Now I'm pulling on the backing and the fly line and it is not going anywhere. That is on there nice and tight. So that's it. That tool makes it really simple and I haven't done one of these in a long time guys. So um, that's your nail knot attaching your backing to your um, fly line. Okay. All right. All right. So we now have the backing attached to the fly line. So now we just need to get the fly line onto the reel. I've done the same sort of thing as I did with the backing where I've attached it onto my DIY reel system here. So, um, 
my glasses on for this. So again, we want to put tension on this line as we reel it in and, um, and then work it with our fingers side to side here, guys. So that's basically going to be the same procedure as we did with the, uh, the backing. Trying to work it and keep tension on it as we reel it in and side to side. And that's all we're going to do here until we get to the other end. Just keep reeling and working it side to side. But it is important to keep tension on it. Really important. Just otherwise your reel is going to end up as a real mess. And it sometimes works better to have two people do this. But this isn't this isn't so bad. It's working pretty good, actually. Just check occasionally, make sure it looks pretty even across the board. Fill in any gaps that maybe don't like they're getting feeling filled in. Getting towards the end here. There we go. All right. We now have the. Uh, the fly line on with the backing behind it and uh, we're now ready to attach the leader. All right, so we've got the fly line on, the floating fly line on the reel now and um, almost every floating fly line comes with a loop on the end and um, so I'm just going to show you the easiest knot for beginners especially to, to do on this. Um, the leader um, also comes with a loop and so we're going to do a loop to loop connection but there's a right way and a wrong way to do this and um, for the longest time I'll admit I was doing it the wrong way so um, but when you get your leader it's, it's going to be kind of uh, wired up uh, coiled up have a tendency and what I just like to do is kind of just stretch it between my fingers kind of pull on it and just stretch it out and uh, when you do that it kind of brings the kink out of the monofilament makes it a lot straighter and uh, gives you better lays on the water better so you just kind of want to stretch it out uh, when you first get it and there's a uh, there's things they sell to do this a little pad that will grab the the uh, monofilament uh, leader but you really don't need it okay so now we have the float line on the reel and the next step is going to be to attach the uh, the leader. Um, this, uh, like I said, is a monofilament uh, clear line. Um, it's thick at the loop end and uh, it tapers down to whatever size uh, line you, you purchased in your package. And so this tapers down to a 4x line uh, strength and diameter at the end. Uh, and so most all these uh, leaders now are, are, are sold with a loop on the end and so are the fly lines and so it makes for a very easy connection um, but there is a right way and a wrong way to do this connection between these two loops the right way is for the fly line to go through the loop of the leader okay I'll show you a close-up on this but the right way is going to be for the fly line to go through the loop of the leader uh, and then bring the, uh, the extra line from the leader back through the loop of the fly line. The wrong way to do it is for the leader, the clear leader, to go through the loop of the floating fly line and then bring it back. The only way you can bring it back is back through the, uh, the, the loop of the, the monofilament. And that creates what's called, I believe, a cutting, a cutting loop or a cutting knot and um, that is not good <laughs> that is not the way you want to do it but a lot of people end up doing it that way um, if you do it where you put the uh, the floating line through the loop of the leader the correct way you end up with basically a square knot at the end and i'll show this on a close-up so all right let's give it a shot here in a closer up version okay so here we have the two lines we have the floating fly line in my left hand the leader in my right and the correct way to do this is to put the floating fly line through the loop of the leader. So you go like that, 
Then we're going to take the excess here. Okay. What's easiest I found is just to kind of pinch this and put it through the loop. Then we bring back all the excess remaining part of that uh, leader. And you can see as you bring this through, bring that knot through the thing, it brings it to basically a nice little clean square knot. Okay, very clean, very easy connection. That is the correct way to connect them. All right, so I'll show you guys what you don't wanna do. You don't wanna put this loop through the line like this. Go back through the loop. Okay. Gotta get the knot through that loop now. Okay, there we go. And that is what's called a cutting knot. And uh, it's just not a good knot, guys. It doesn't sit well on the line and uh, it can pinch the line to the point where it can maybe even cut the line. But um, even I was doing it the wrong way for years uh, until I learned the correct way to do this. So again, um, you know, you want to have the floating line go through the knot and uh, end up with a much cleaner version of this, uh, this um, leader to floating line connection. Okay, so that's it for uh, the leader to the floating line. We only have one knot left. That's gonna be the leader to the tippet. Okay, so we're coming down to the wire, guys. Last couple of knots here to, to do. Um, this is a very simple knot, and for example purposes right now, I'm gonna start with s some pieces of rope um, to uh, let you see this easier because these lines are getting very thin. So. The tan colored one we're going to assume is the leader, the tapered leader coming from the fly line. And this will be the last piece of line you'll be attaching. It's called tippet. And so to attach these two together, it's called a surgeon's knot. It's a very simple knot. You start by um, bringing these two pieces parallel and you overlap them some distance. And then um, you're going to bring them together and you're going to form a loop like this. And then the tippet end, which is the red, and the end of the uh, leader. You're gonna bring those through that loop one time, and then you're gonna do it one more time. So we're gonna bring these back through one more time, both the tippet and the leader. And that's it. That's what's called a surgeon's knot. And that's, uh, that's it. It's a, it's just over and under the loop twice and you created a very simple knot. It's called the surgeon's knot. It's a very, very strong knot, not going anywhere. All right, so now we'll do it with the uh, actual line itself. Hopefully you can see it. We'll have it on this black black background, but that's essentially what I'll be doing. We are now ready to attach the tippet to the leader. Tippet you would use for trout fishing would generally range from 5X to 7X sizes with 7X being a finer line with less strength, but also less visible to the fish. Okay, hopefully this shows up on the video. In my right hand, we have the tippet. In my left, we have the, the end of the leader. And so uh, we need to overlap these parallel to each other, pointing opposite directions. Bring them together. And then we're gonna create a loop like that. And we're gonna bring this around and through once. You need to do that one more time. I'm gonna get the leader through first. Okay, the leader's through. Get the tip through. go. 
So the tippet's through and that's the end of the leader there. And this is the tippet length here. So we've done gone through the loop twice. We're just gonna close it up. And that's it, that's the surgeon's knot right there. Nice strong knot. All right, we're getting near the end guys. So the uh, fly rod is now loaded up uh, with everything that we need, the backing, the floating fly line, the leader and the tippet. And uh, we just need to assemble the rod together. I'll show you a quick tip on that and then how to run the, the line through um, the ferrules. And, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll get the, uh, the, the fly on the end of the tippet. So uh, typically real quick, when you assemble these, um, easiest kind of start with the smallest piece, but what you're going to be doing, let me get my glasses on. Uh, some rods have uh, alignment uh, dots on them. Yeah, this does. But as you put these together, um, basically you don't want to just straight jam them together. Uh, they will have a tendency to kind of pull away from the, you know, if you're casting hard. So as you put these together, keep them about a quarter turn away from the last spot they need to be lined up. And as they get close to the spot and you feel it starting to tighten up on the, uh, the other side of the rod, uh, as you push them together, kind of squeeze them together, line those points up and pull in that quarter turn as you come to an end. And that makes it very hard to pull these apart again. So that's just kind of a quick tip. Don't just straight jam the pieces together. Do a quarter turn at right at the end as the pieces you start feeling some resistance. Um, do that quarter turn to bring them into alignment. And if you don't have alignment dots, you know, you can just kind of eyeball it. So that's my tip on those. So let's get these together and then uh, we'll get the line onto the, the pole itself. So I'm going to keep this about a quarter turn away till it's to the very end and then twist it to line up. Good. All right, so it's completely together. Now, the line itself. What I typically do is get near the end, make sure I'm not stepping on the tippet or the leader. That's out of the way. Um, just pinch the, the end of the fly line, the actual fly line. Don't, uh, don't deal with the monofilament, just deal with the fly line. And come through each of the eyelets with that fly line. And it's just a lot easier way to to uh, get this uh, through your reel and probably want to make sure I got plenty of excess here. Okay, so we're just going to run these through the eyelet. Okay, also really good to check just to make sure you haven't missed one, which it's not uncommon for me to do. And you want to find out now before you tie on the fly. Yeah, it looks like we got everything. All right, so that's how you put the rod pieces together. Um, we're now ready to tie the fly on to the end of this uh, tippet. And that's what we'll do next. Okay, we are at the last uh, knot we need to do. and. We're going to assume for this purposes, the red uh, paracord here is the tippet and the last section of tippet. We're going to assume this is the hook of the fly and the eye of the hook that we need to get the tippet through. So what we're going to do is get that line through the eye of the hook and then basically just uh, wrap the tippet around itself. I like to do at least six times, maybe more. But then we bring that uh, end through the loop closest to the hook. That's a clinch knot. And then a double clinch knot is to bring that thing back through the second loop you just created. So you go through the loop closest to the hook and then through the loop you just created there. And you pull that all together and that's gonna be your, this looks like a mess right now because it's paracord. But uh, basically, this is a clinch knot, double clinch knot actually. So, there we go. Looks a little cleaner there. But that's basically your double clinch knot and um, it's an extremely strong knot. And um, 
you know, any excess you would trim right there. So we'll see how this comes out on camera, but that's basically how you do it, um, you know, with, with a, hopefully a more visible version of a, of a double clinch knot. Very simple knot to do. Okay, so we have here what's called a wet fly. This is a fly that would be generally used below the water, the surface of the water, for fish that are feeding below the surface of the water. Uh, dry flies are flies you would use on top of the water to float on top if they're feeding on the surface, on uh, insects uh, that are laying on the surface of the water. That is a, considered a dry fly, a wet fly generally. A lot of times has a little bead head to help the fly drop down. Uh, below the surface of the water. These are not intended to float. They're intended to sink. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is get the um, the end of the tippet here. Hopefully this comes out on the camera because I know it's very, very fine. Why? But we're going to do the clinch knot. And uh, so we'll get it through the eye here first. There we go. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just, like before, do like five or six wraps. Two, three, four, move this out of the way. Five, six, do one more in case I missed one there. All right, so we're going to grab the end of the line here. And we're going to look for that first loop next to the hook eye. Hopefully you can see this on the camera. That first loop is right here. And I'm going to come through. That's a clinch knot right there. <clears throat> and then we're going to go through this loop here, and that's the improved clinch knot. So I'm going to grab this. Move it through. Then we're just going to hold it. We're not going to pull on the tag end. We're just going to pull on the other end of the line. It's generally how you want to do these uh, clinch knots. And just let it come up to the hook. You'll feel the knot kind of come up closer to the hook. Keep stretching on it. There we go. It's right up to the, uh, the hook. Use my fingernail just to make sure it's down there. Back and forth. And that's the improved clinch knot. Very solid knot, and you can trim it pretty close to the knot. Like that. And there you go. So that's, uh, that's it for uh, all the knots. The improved clinch knot's pretty simple. You just gotta practice it, and uh, it's not a difficult knot. All right, so that wraps up the video for how to get new fly line onto a fly reel. Um, hopefully you guys followed this along and, and can see that it's really not that difficult. Um, the knots you're gonna use the most will by far and away be the clinch knot to attach new flies onto your tippet and also the surgeon's knot to attach the tippet onto the leader. Um, both of those are really easy knots to do um, and hopefully this video gives you some sense that if you follow along, it's not that difficult. Um, and one of the things I want to let you guys know for the coming year, this is the end of 2022 here. Um, in 2023, I'm considering doing um, a subscriber meetup. And um, as part of that, I'm thinking maybe teaching people how to fly fish. So I'll have a location where we're right on a river. Um, but I'm not sure yet, because I'd, I'd rather you know have a meetup be where people don't feel like that's part of the deal and they have to learn how to fly fish. So, um, and maybe they already do. So, you know, and that sort of thing. So, but um, that's one thing I'm considering. And then the other thing for uh, next year I have coming up is a five day trip to Montana to do some fly fishing in the um, Yellowstone River Basin area, uh, north of Yellowstone National Park. And so, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. That'll be a really cool trip. Um, and some other mini overlanding trips coming up in the coming year, uh, not just in California, but also outside of California. So looking forward to that. Again, really appreciate you guys following this channel. And um, if, um, if you did like this video, please like and subscribe. Really appreciate it. It helps the channel grow. And uh, looking forward to seeing you guys on the trail someday.